welcome and thank you for joining for another one of Mike and Billy's Whiskey Reviews. Today, I am going to give you a comparison which we have not brought you for quite some time. Um, I think probably it's been five months since we brought you a comparison review. I'm going to compare the Kilhoman Lot Gorm to the Ardbeg Oogadale. Now, with a comparison series, I always want to make it um, a relatively even comparison in regards to price, the style of whiskey, um, give you some reason behind the madness of why I'm comparing two whiskeys. Now, here's where I have to give some credit to uh, my good friend Keith. Um, most of you in the whiskey community will know him as the master, excuse me, the malted man cave. So Keith at the malted man cave. I know him as simply Keith, and uh, some people in uh, L.A. tell me they know him as simply as Hollywood Honey. I don't know if that's about Keith, but um, perhaps you can enlighten us. I digress. Let's get back to the whiskey. So, essentially, Kilhoman Lot Gorm and the Arbib Ubidale, um, in my opinion, are pretty similar as far as a flavor profile. So, I want to tell you what I think of the differences between the two, and then which one I would pay for the money. Now again, I will say that the Ardbeg Ugadale has gone down to roughly $60 US um, here locally. And the Cahoma Lot Gorm, if you can find it, is around $85, $90 bottle roughly. Um, to give you the age statement, which there is none, on the Ugadale. Ugadale doesn't tell you what kind of whiskeys they are. I've heard 10, 11 year old whiskeys, but I'll get more into that later. The Cahoma Lot Gorm actually has a still date of 2010 and a bottle date of 2016. So at the most, it's six-year-old whiskey. Um, at the least, it's five-year-old whiskey. Cajoma Lot Gorm, I know this, I believe this is natural color and unchill filtered. I also believe the Arbeg Ugadale is natural color and unchill filtered. So, enough of the blabbering. Let's get into it. Let's go first with the color. These are incredibly close as far as the color. I don't know if you can pick that up, but they are almost identical. Identical as far as color. Which is a nice cherry matured color. <sighs> Oogadale, chocolate, spice, saltiness, alcohol, it's all there. It's really front, it's really forward. You get bitter notes. You get some dark sherry notes, but they're, it's more dark than it is sherry. You get sea salt, you get iodine, some like plaster. If you've ever uh, worked on your house, and, I don't, I, and if you can afford to hire someone to do it, I would suggest that because I gotta tell you, I did like the, um, I drywalled a basement one time and I put the tape up and the putty in the corners and it was miserable work. But a little bit of that putty I get here in the Zugadale. All right, just give me the first smell of the Cajoma and Lagorn. Much easier on the nose. It's a low ray BB, it's 46 as compared to 54.2. But it's not just softer, it's rounder. And even, even the distinction in my voice should tell you the difference between this whiskey and this whiskey. I'm getting chocolate, I'm getting bitter notes. Smoke. But the smoke isn't as intense as it is with the Oogadale. Rounded dates. Around the dates with just a kiss of smoke, where this is a, a smoke with a with a um, um, a remembrance of a date. This is a date with just a puff of smoke. Oddly, I'm getting that plaster um, that you, that putty putty plaster that you would put on the corner when you're essentially finishing um, a room and drywall. Not the salt and the iodine that I get in this one. Maybe a little more sugary 
and they've got on them. <clears throat> so on the nose, I prefer the Kilhoman. Let me just give it a quick second just to make sure I'm not being biased. Much sharper on this one, much sharper. Okay, first sip time. Um, I'm gonna go with Cajoman first because it's lower ABV. Oh, nice nose, nice nose on this Cajoman. Thank you, Keith. Mm. It's good, it's good. Round and full yet easily palatable. Again, getting sherry notes, getting peat, getting smoke. Peat smoke's the same thing, I realize that. Um, figs and dates, dark fruits there on the palate. It's full and it's rich. Um, it's really mouth coating all encompassing. I forgot to grab a bottle of water, so I'm gonna do so real quick. Um, forgive me, I, I don't mean to kind of uh, step away in a video, but uh, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to do that real quick. So just give me just a quick second. Hopefully that was not too tedious for you. My refrigerator is located just to my left, um, not too far away. So I'm gonna put this in there after Take a quick sip of the Ubi Dale and we'll see if water changed it as far as the nose or the palate. <clears throat> really nice, really nice nose and nice taste on the Skahoman Light Gorm. Unfortunately, um, they're not as readily available as I would like to see here locally. Um, I don't know if it's a limited edition, but um, not an easy bottle to get your hand on where the Ubi Dale is. Okay, going back to the Ubi Dale, definitely more alcohol front. It is a higher ABV, makes sense. Let's give it a quick sip. <clears throat> I'll say this about the Oogadale. For as aggressive it is on the nose, it is not so on the palate. <clears throat> Really easy on the palate. Again, a lot of that same fr fruits, um, figs, dates. Um, you get a sherry note. You get the um, little bit of caramel, actually, on there where I didn't get that on the Cajoma. A little bit stronger of a finish, probably that high ABV is driving that to some extent. <clears throat> I tell you what, um, Coming in this video, I assumed, not having these back-to-back, -back, that I would enjoy the Gohoman better on the nose and on the palate. And why I did enjoy it on the nose better, I gotta say I'm a little bit um, impressed with the Oogadale on the palate, um, as far as why I thought neat. The flavors are just more vibrant, they're more there. And um, I'm sure a lot of that has to do with the higher ABV, but it just kind of drives those flavors home and it has a little bit longer of a finish. Actually, I'm going to start with the Cajon this time. A lot of the same notes. Sugary, dark chocolate, figs, dates, salt. The water added to it and added a little bit more richness actually to it. Which is strange because for 46% ABV, that could go either way. Um, it's almost at that borderline with, I don't want to add a lot of water because it was perfect on the palate. But I will say this, it actually opened up the nose a decent amount. And I'm picking up the exact same things, just more vibrant and full. A beautiful nosing whiskey, this kill home and like Gorm. Keith, thank you. Hollywood honey, Thank you for gifting me the rest of this bottle. I know we bought it together, and I know we we're both a big fan of it, but I think you've let me file shit off. Hopefully, I cheered it right for you. Okay, let's get to the Arbit Oogadale with a little bit of water. Oh, that really changed things with the water. <sighs> Took the alcohol sharpness right out of it. Yeah. 
I reviewed this with Keith and Billy. Forgive me, I don't know exactly what review it was. Billy and I did our Big Googie Dale early. Top 10 videos, four, six, seven, eight. They weren't great. Um, and I compared it back then to a chocolate bar filled with liquid smoke, drizzled with raw sugar on top. And that's exactly what I'm getting again right here with water. It's a beautiful whiskey, it really is. I found this with our Bed Dale. If I drink it on a regular basis, I lose the appreciation for it. If I don't drink it, come back to it five, six, seven months later, add a little bit of water, take my time with it, it's still the rich whiskey that I initially fall in love to. Anyway, let's get back to it. Because no, this is one of my whiskey loves. My whiskey loves the Ardbeg Dale. I've been drinking it for seven, eight years. In my mind, the old ones were better. Maybe they are. Maybe I'm convincing myself that that's the case. I don't know. That's why I like these type of reviews. This nose with a little bit of water is incredible. Water and time. Oh, it's so much better when those a little bit of water. And that's why I like high ABV alcohols. Whether they're calf strength or high ABV, if you're above 50%, awesome. Let me water it down to my preference. That's my thought. All right, let's go back to the Kohama. The water thinned it out. Of the four noses, neat, Kilhoman, Oogadale, water, Kilhoman, Oogadale, the Kilhoman with water, fourth out of the four. The Kilhoman without water, number two out of four. The Ardbeg Oogadale with water, number one out of number four, without water, number three out of number four. I hope I'm saying this right. I hope it makes sense to you guys. I don't know why you wouldn't. Say it's, you're on the episode of Walking Dead and you can't find good water. Kilhoman Lot Gorm is my choice, both for the nose and for the smell. If you're living in a civilized society and you can find clean water, the Arbeg Oogadale is cheaper. The Arbeg Oogadale is more readily available. The Arbeg Oogadale is a higher ABV. And with the addition of water, in my opinion, it's a better whiskey, both as far as nose and taste. One guy's opinion. But just know this, I came in here with a different opinion in my mind. I came in here with the opinion that this was gonna be a better whiskey, and I changed my mind, even after neat nosing and tasting and agreeing, that when I put water into it and gave it a little bit of time, this was a better whiskey. So I was all planning to tell you guys that, hey, this is a five-year-old whiskey, and it's a better whiskey than this, so this must not be a very old whiskey. However, I gotta come back to it the truth, which is, I have no idea how old Oogadale is. I wish they would tell you. If it was five-year-old whiskey, it wouldn't bother me. It's all about the taste, as you can tell. It's all about the taste and the smell and the taste. And if this is a five or six-year-old whiskey, so be it. Not a big deal to me. Um, however, with a higher ABV, I'm not sure if with the water, the added richness comes from the higher ABV or comes from extra age. It would be my opinion at this point that now the Oogadale probably isn't a 10, 11, 12 year old whiskey. I'm guessing it's a single digit year whiskey. Five, six, seven, eight year old whiskey. That's my guess. Um, but I don't know. And I don't know if anyone does. If you do, please mention them in the comments. But, but again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of cop out here and say that uh, if you're drinking neat, I like the Home and Lot Gorm as a better whiskey. If you're drinking um, with the ability to put water in your whiskey, I would go with the Arbeg Oogadale. Arbeg Oogadale is also cheaper and it's also a higher ABV. So take it for what you will. I want to thank you for joining us for another one of Mike and Billy's Whiskey Reviews. Again, Billy will be back with me on the next review. Um, we actually have a few recorded now, so when we're doing individual reviews, we will be together. I'm going to do a couple one-offs uh, when it comes to comparisons. See if you guys like them. Let me know what you think in the comments. Until next time, I wish you happy drinking, and I will see you in the comment section.